Hello YouTube and computer craft fans, it is Elnet TM here today with another um, <clears throat> project update. So what we're going to be talking about or what I will be demonstrating today is this brand new um, thing I'm working on that it's called an encryption manager. It's going to be part of my SafeLock um, security suite operating system that I'm going to be incorporating um, in my own and it's basically this module that you will be able to plug in and handle, you know, uh, user accounts. It'll handle file system encryption, um, user account file encryption. So if you have, for, for example, you have someone, let's say you're hosting a computer craft university type thing, and you have um, 25 people enrolled in your five computers, right? And they're all separate classes. Um, but you don't want kids cheating on tests, and you're going to evaluate something. You don't want people be able to you know throw up in a startup disk or something in a disk drive, and then being like, "Oh, so that's how the kid did it," and then you know stealing the work. Um, so what I'm working on here, which is, I think is actually really cool, is an obfuscation sort of type of encryption type thing that is only accessible by the person at the person at that one time. There is no passcode stored on the computer at all. It's completely in your head, um, and it it. Uses it's pretty it's I mean it's the yeah, the concept is simple and the the um, implementation is simple but it it can be very complex and it's very effective in the way that it does it because like I said it's not storing a passcode on the actual computer so you're not gonna have someone hack it and get the password I mean you'll you'll understand well, once I demonstrate the size we'll go um so basically I have a copy of the firewall program here. Um, and that's not, that's being stupid. Okay, so there's that. Now I'm just going to go ahead and quit that. Oopsies. Alright, so you saw, I mean, it's obvious it works and it's there, so, um, okay, there we go. So basically, I'm gonna run our, my program, which is uh, um, it'll be a API that you'll you'll be able to implement later. But for now, it's just a standalone type of thing. All right, so I'm gonna, you run the um, encryption manager program, and then the file or a list of files. So let's say you have, if you run the fs list, and you just pass an entire directory. I mean, why not, right? Yeah, you can do it. You can definitely do it, and it'll encrypt every single file. Um, so we're going to go here, it's going to leave a little um, space. And basically what you need to do is type in a, a minimum 26 character encryption key. And it doesn't use numbers or letters, you can't do that, you can't do like that. Or also just throw an arrow. So you can't do that. Um, but I'll just use a super basic one. So you can just go across all the numbers. And All right, so that's the key that I'm going to use. It's going to hit enter. It's going to run through. It's going to do its magic thing. So now, if you tr if you if you go well, right now it saves it as um, the name of the file underscore new, just so I don't. Because I was testing on my <laughs> program, so I was being kind of stupid. But All right, so as you can see, maybe if I uh, I don't want to pop that too. Uh, Close enough. Okay, there you go. So you can see that it's all flipped, and it's encrypted. And even if someone, it's 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 useless. It's useless. If someone gets this, it's useless because they're not going to understand anything. And it's unique to that person. So, um, it's like it's effective. <laughs> it's effective because, like, I'm going to take this. What the what the heck am I supposed to do with this? There's nothing. I there's no lead. There's no key that I can get back because that person has it stuck in his head and I'm not going to manipulate that at all. So that's there and it's there. So, yeah. Um, and all the way down, it's it, it's persistent. It's persistent. You're not going to lose. It's all here. You know? And it, it's jumbled. And if I try to execute, obviously, this is going to be a joke. Even if I execute it, it's going to be like, what? So it's gonna not even gonna work. There's no way. And I'm working on the decryption part where I'll actually flip it back. So if you haven't, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the technical term. 
runtime decompiler, you can decompile it, run it, or access the data of a user or something, and then encrypt it when they log out. Or like if I did a logout function or something, they'll encrypt all my stuff. So the next person tries to come in, they won't be able to see my stuff. And I can't see their stuff until and you know, you understand. Um uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and uh, basically explain to you in short how this works, um, and I'll explain how you'll be able to implement this later, but very simply, you'll be able to use this account management system, and I'll add a lot, a lot of customization to it, um, and you'll be able to use it in your operating systems, obviously, license and everything, as per um, protocol. So I'm going to go ahead and explain to you how this stuff works. Alright, so this is the code. It's really, really, really basic. And this isn't even the decryption manager. But basically, these are all the available characters. I'm going to have to probably go through and modify because a couple of these are actually dealing with operations. That could be kind of screw up when it's changing back. So I'll have to go through them and change some of it if need be. Um, but right now, it works, the encryption part of it. Um, so I'll take it through. You a little bit, you know, this isn't really going to compromise any of the security because the code is actually generated by that person and it's really only accessible from that person. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, step through this. Um, so, token talk is reading, so that's basically what the, um, the long, really long key is that you plug in. Um, and that was just debugging, so I just ignore that. I, I meant they had something later. Anyway. So then we're going to run an encode function, which is right here. And a tr, which is basically, I can pass in a whole bunch. So if you have the, you know, if you use the fs.list and just ret return every single file from that directory, it'll go ahead and encrypt everything. And I'm working on stage uh, progress bar thing that I'll work with here. Um, and then just pass in our token. So we're going to go up here to our encode. And we're going to, um, so this validate key token is going to return two things. It's going to return a boolean yes or no, and our character map, if it did end up working correctly. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to follow it, we're going to go validate key token, we're going to pass in our token, and basically, I'm going to kind of simplify this, it's going to use a function called split that I wrote, it's just going to explode the entire thing into unique um, elements in an array. Um, and this is actually relevant. Okay. All right. So then, this is this is a correct. This is the little thing that's gonna help with validating your token. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into a for loop here, and we're gonna loop over. Um, where is it? Right here. When it explodes. So these are the characters from the file that you opened. Um, and it's going to loop through, and if um, those things equal this at all, then you'll add a correct plus one. Nice and simple. It's a bit like, alright, it's going to read every single character from the past, the uh, token that you entered, and it's going to validate to make sure it exists in this list. So if you ever want to update your list, as long as you have a minimum of 26, because there's 26 letters in the alphabet, and it's not manipulates around. Um, so there's that. Okay. 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 Um, so then it's going to add, add correct plus one, so that means each element is passing the test. And then we're just going to here, if correct is less than 26, then you just throw an error. If our token detected or not enough characters, no letters or numbers. And then we're going to return true and that character map that we exploded for later. All right, so we're going to go to our root, uh, back to our encode function, and it's going to return true as long as everything went well. And it's going to loop through all the files. It's going to open a file handle, read it, save all the text, um, split the text, explode the text, close that handle. Our map, uh, and then we're going to go to our rotate key exchange. So this is where the actual magic happens. And it flips, um, it flips all of the things that are in the file to its encrypted map. So if you go to get character index, which is like, uh, not even that. character map and token map, so it's going to explode the token map and it's going to explode the character map, and that's just how we're going to work with this. So the new map's right here. I'm going to for loop with the character map here. I um, have an index. I'm going to go 
get character index. So when it's looping through, and it's going to be like, okay, so we're at this element from this character map. Now we're going to go to our get character index. We're going to pass in a letter. We have a capital letter. We have a lowercase letter um, thing. All right. Um, it's going to loop through both of them. And if it, it finds a match, then it's going to return that number because then it would correspond in this fashion. In the, to in the token, of course. In the token, of course. Okay. So then local index, if index is negative one, which means, oh, I didn't explain that. Negative one means, you know, it's not actually a letter. Then it's just actually no punctuation, um, syntax. No, it's not syntax. Um, it's just random stuff. Yeah, random stuff. But that means that it's not, basically it just means it's not a letter and it's not going to be a letter. So then we're just going to insert that at its normal position. And it, by the way, this retains spaces and everything. So if I actually go into this, you can actually see that, you know, the indents and everything remain persistent. So we won't lose those in the encryption and decryption, which is nice. All right, so there's that. And basically it's just going to um, flip it. And it's going to insert into the new map, print it, save it, and... And it's just going to do it over and over again. So, that's what I have right now. I'm going to be releasing an entire, entire module that you guys will be able to plug right into your operating system that you're working on. Uh, you know, it will handle user accounts, like I said, file system encryption, um, user file encryption. It'll, it'll, it'll have basically what you need. And then I'll also be releasing an operating system that um, encompasses all this. And I'll... It'll be more probably pretty secure. I'm working on a couple pretty good ideas for it that I can't really. Um, some kind of they're just drafts right now. They're beta. I'm working on, and they're really really glitchy. So I'm not even gonna start on that. But that's pretty much it. Um, if you like what is, what I'm working on and you think it's a good idea and you're gonna maybe you know incorporate it, maybe I'm not saying anything. But if you think it's a good idea, just go ahead and let me down in the comments, uh, subscribe, and uh, look for any more news updates coming out on this uh, computer crap. Forum host, you guys have a splendid day. This is Anna Team signing out. Goodbye.